Hi, I'm Melissa Hirschleb, a full-time artist. It's my parents' fault. I was born into a family of artists. My parents both were professional artists. My dad worked at an ad agency in the city to support the family, thank goodness, because I know how difficult it is to be a professional artist. I was a landscaper for a while because my next favorite love was gardening. However, I chose to pursue my art full time. Living around professional artists, I was always around the tools of the trade. They were there for me to use or not to use. My parents never really guided me in that direction. Rather, I took it on myself. Watching them paint was an education in itself, and it moved me deeply inside. But what really took me into the arts was the National Geographic when I was a child. I would leaf through these beautiful photographs of indig indigenous peoples and found it deeply fascinating and it hit the root of who I am. One day I walked out of the front door and looked at the leaves of the oak trees and I turned them all orange. I didn't realize at that time that I had this ability to see beyond what we all see in nature, but I wanted to change it and find the possibilities that I saw in the National Geographic magazine of cultures, insects, plants that intrigued me and I wondered about the possibilities of what could be. I took a class with a, a brilliant artist, Ralph Borge, who taught symbolic realism. And I thought, I need to take this class because I don't think in those terms. It was very difficult, but I learned a lot from him. But I also learned that I don't think that way. I think internally. My gut reacts and I paint. In my earlier work, I was playing upon this root that I felt from the National Geographic. And so I started with insects that were from my mind, indigenous looking people. And that started my vision going of what I wanted internally to express. There seemed to be always a little whimsy that would overlay some of my pieces. And my nature is to be, to take life a little lightly, um, although I'm very serious, but it, it comes out in my work. And at this point in time, I can say that the work is very emotionally based, relating directly from Mother Nature. I have now moved into just black and white, which I find a very deep expression because without color, your mind has to doesn't have to do actually anything. You're not relating to color, you're relating to the emotion and the image, and your mind is filling in the rest. I want you to feel my work. I was a very advanced life drawer, which I loved deeply and practiced the most at the College of Arts and Crafts. However, when I left there, I decided to challenge myself and take a beginning life drawing class at the College of Marin. And being very bored one day, having to draw out of the book, uh, my line took a turn. And I thought, what is that? And can I do that again? Can I think about something that I wasn't thinking about? And sure enough, I could guide this line differently. And being a black and white artist at that point in time, just drawing, which I thought I would draw forever, somebody gave me some of their used watercolors and I started timidly adding watercolor to the elbow, the wrist area, 
And then I liked color and I found the color migrating in to the whole painting and my work became a very colorful pursuit. However, I did leave painting for a while and I practiced five years of ceramics. Last year, during the beginning of COVID, was a call from the de Young Museum for artwork. And I thought, I would like to paint again. So I created three paintings and I was overcome by the emotion of painting again and realized that is where my voice is. So then, in August of last year, I hauled out a painting I had started and completed in a completely different way than the intention at first. And the piece I find, I still look at, and I'm amazed at what I did. And I have been now pursuing my painting this year, as well as having to make a living with my ceramics. So I'm dual personalities, but they feed each other. One is black gouache on clayboard, the other is black underglaze on clay. They sing to each other and actually give me a respite from one and the other, but together they come and give me a new force in my content of my work. In my early reference as a child, I was relating to nature differently. And over the years, I've realized that I have much more interest in what lies underneath and what we don't see. So my work, I'm trying to bring my feeling of the mystery of life, of what we don't see, into my work. And I know that's a big thing to say. However, when I am painting, every stroke and every Q-tip taking away paint is this feeling of what I want to give you about how I feel about life, which is beyond the physical and into the metaphysical. And I find deep interest in these indigenous cultures of shamanism and the relationship of these indigenous peoples that are losing their voice on earth they are the only ones that really remember how to listen and speak to nature. And I'm trying my own way to speak to nature and tell you how beautiful and precious and mysterious it is. People often comment on the eyes in my pieces and it's not an intentional thing on my part but it is the depth of my feeling will come through the eyes. It's just natural for me to put eyes into things and try and find eyes in landscapes or forests. It's to bring you inside the work and inside the soul of the work. I've practiced art for 44 years at this point in time, and my pursuit with black gouache on this remarkable surface called clayboard, I find the interaction of gouache, which has some clay in it and is highly pigmented and dries flat and matte on a surface of clay, clayboard, there's a dance that goes on for me, on the surface, that is so intriguing that I'm very involved in just the application and elimination of the paint and seeing what 
it's giving me. I usually look for eyes or faces, but I'm also looking for the mystery. Now that I'm much more oriented towards actual nature for the first time and interpreting that, uh, I'm looking for the textures in the story that are deep in the paint. Many of us practice this way of looking into our pieces. It is the nature of art because we are connecting to something that we do not see and we have to ponder this emotional content that creates the individual's artistic expression. And mine happens to be this black gouache on clayboard. So nature is offering herself to me. When I go on hikes, I find myself much more interested in the fallen tree and the raggedy bark and splintered wood than wanting to paint the beauty because I see the beauty in what happens to nature when a root ball gets turned up and all the little bugs and possibilities are living within that. That is my pursuit at the moment. I've always been attracted to plants. I waitressed for a while, but I decided to start a business of garden maintenance. It was a joy to actually work with plants, see the bugs, resonate with nature, help it to grow, look at the color, the leaf forms. It all fed my soul so that I could speak the language of nature through my art. It was in transparent watercolor a colorful rendering of plants. It's now a black and white rendering of plants. But Mother Nature has always been and always will be at the core of my definition. Underlying the pursuit of making a living I was always producing my work. I was waiting for the time to be able to leave making money doing something else and pursue my art full time. I loved working with nature and it certainly fed me, my soul, and my artwork. But at the end of gardening, I went on the road and decided to show at outdoor art festivals all around the country, driving tens of thousands of miles for about 20 years. And that allowed me to make a living as an artist. I want you to know that I think creativity is the most important expression in life. It allows for open thought, possibility, yielding, and it's inside of all of us, whether it's gonna be writing, painting, dancing, whatever, creativity in math. So the depth of my feeling of practicing for so many years, including being the witness to my parents' painting into my painting and career as an artist, it can be done. It's a will. You have to find a way to do it. If you have to work as a ceramicist like me for a while, waitress, garden, whatever it is that it takes, find that inside yourself because you will make a better world through your pursuit. Thank you.